Okay, so I think it's. Thomas, does it do the following thing? The following? No. You can do this. Okay, we're good. Okay, all right. I'll give us what works. Okay, sorry. All right, thanks for coming. Um, it's something we ever do, right? So we, we can go and introduce ourselves again. So I'll just. Sure, uh, I'm Daniel. I'm a first year political science PhD student, and I'm broadly interested in political institutions in Latin America. Hi, I'm Risha. I'm a first year from uh, communication department. And uh, I guess I'm mostly interested in social networks. Yeah, that kind of stuff. Agent-based modeling, mm -hmm. system science, and yeah. uh, My name is Kalita. I'm a second year in the program, uh, and I'm interested in authoritarian politics and institutions under dictatorship. Hi, I'm Nayam. Uh, I'm a fifth year student at UNC and studying in college. Uh, my dissertation is on self-seeking war in political history. Uh, hi, I'm Ravni. I'm a second year undergrad. History. Um, I'm doing math, econ, and political science. Um, I just always been interested in game theory. Um, I think I'm still trying to figure out what my, you know, academic and research interests are in detail. But I'm really excited to be here. I'm Joshua. I'm a second year PhD in political science. Uh, I mainly study election administration, election law, and Oregon. So very, very boring. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it should be boring. <laughs> Thanks, everybody. Uh, um, let me see. I put it, made this. Did I send the link to everyone that uh, this is a little um, website? It's like a mini website. Yeah. So this has the, um, the papers in it. So uh, there's something more sophisticated. I'll try to figure it out. But if you want to see the paper right now, we're discussing this. So there was some demand to talk about um, cooperative game theory and elections and that kind of stuff. So um, also, I guess. One thing we'll try to suggest is um, just the how how do you come up with ideas? How do you uh, create games? How do you, how do you you know make things from scratch and something? So kind of what I'm trying to do is talk about how that. This is my dissertation. So anyway, so this is the um, paper we're talking about. So we started talking about it last time. Um, yeah, we had a little um, uh, detour on The Simpsons because <laughs> I wrote this when The Simpsons was coming. I remember my. My roommates were watching this at the time. <laughs> this is like 1990. So it came out in 92. Yeah, so I think it was working in 1990. That kind of thing. Okay, so um, what's the point of this paper? So um, the point of this paper is to kind of, uh, um, like, I guess the last time we introduced it would be uh, um, on the three cycles. So say that there's like, I think you use five, six, and seven, something like this. I think like this. So say that there's three people, so we'll say this is a set of three people. And we're going to write down the game, so to speak, of this. What does this, this mean? These are their preferences, the payoff, so to speak. And when I'm writing this down, this means that persons one and two can move from this outcome, say, to, I don't know, six, seven, seven. And I think this is what we did last time, right? Yeah. Okay, and say that persons, I don't know, um, this is uh, one, two, three. So we need this, six, seven, 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 six. And persons two and three. So this is an end cognitive cycle, right? Oh, we can actually move. You're actually on wheels, so we can. <laughs> this is like a little. <laughs> yeah, I didn't. I thought this is the only class of this. It seems to have this. I don't know. The other classes are. We can just build it. This yeah. is building, really? Oh, okay. I want this. Okay. Maybe it's good for one that cares. Maybe they're about to not. <laughs> So anyway, what do you predict is going to happen? So this is the currency cycle. What is the standard prediction? So for example, here, persons one and two would rather move to here, right? Because mm -hmm. persons with one, one instead of getting five, one five works and one gets a six. Instead of getting six, person two gets a seven, right? Because persons one and two will move from here to here. They want to do this. And by writing this arrow, it means that they want to do this. From here, persons one and three will want to move from here to here, right? Because one gets better off, so there's three. Okay. Person here, persons two, blue, blue, blue. It's a very classic kind of thing. It's a very classic uh, cooperative game theory thing because the, the standard division between non cooperative and cooperative game theory is something that in non cooperative game theory we only consider deviations by single people. In cooperative game theory, we allow groups to deviate. Okay. So, what's the prediction? So, you know, what do you think is going to happen? outcome is 
unstable, you yeah. say that each one happens to be like positive. Yeah, exactly. Like that. Yeah, exactly. Everything is unstable, right? From everything, there's something else which can happen, right? So um, it seems like the obvious thing is nothing more, nothing will be predicted. Okay? Um, uh, so last time we talked about the sort of the empty core that we talked about. Right? So the idea is that the core is. We can think about domination. So this sort of speed dominates this because there's a coalition which can move from here to here, and that everyone in that coalition wants to spread. So this dominates this, which means that they will expect movements from here. This dominates this. This dominates this. Everything is dominated. So we say the core is usually all defined as clearly something. The core is a set of things which are not dominated. So there's no they have core. Okay. So um, the standard prediction here is that. I'll just begin with like, you know, nothing is predicted, or maybe they're all equally bad, or whatever. So when I was approaching this problem, I thought, um, I'm going to try to solve this. And I, you know, obviously, any time you have to deal with, if you think that you're going to make a nice positive contribution to the world, or a nice positive statement, you'll have to say what you think will happen in here. So my argument was something like, actually, I think that all are stable, OK? And you can make the following argument using this kind of far-sighted thing. So the idea is, if we're saying that this is not going to happen because of the movement from here, right? That essentially assumes that this is stable, right? That once you move from here to here, that will be the end, right? But at the same time, we just realized before that once you move to here, maybe they'll move to here, right? So this doesn't sort of make sense to say that this is unstable because this is stable because this might not be stable either, right? So you have to have kind of a consistent story, right? So the argument is how can you make a consistent story? What I thought was this. Okay, so why would, for example, this be stable? Well, it would be stable because once one and two move to here, there might be further deviations. What's a possible further deviation from six and five? Is this, okay? So the idea is persons one and two when deviating to here can anticipate the further deviation from here, right? Would that further deviation deter persons one and two? Or is someone? So if persons one and two are thinking about moving to here, they think, oh, well, it's possible we'll end up here. Will that make one or two pause? Maybe two pause. Yeah, exactly. They would make, they would get them getting five instead of six, right? So the idea is, this someone brought this up last time. This is kind of like the analog of um, subject perfection. Okay, that people are looking ahead. So um, yeah, so the idea is that people are far they can look ahead, then we can kind of create more justifications for things being stable. Right? So this could be stable because the deviation to here could be deterred by the further the deviation to here. And of course, that assumes that this is stable. But then we could come up with some sort of story about why this is stable. Yeah? And it's sort of like, well, this is stable because the deviation to here could be, de this could be deterred by the deviation to this end. Okay, so that's kind of what I came up with um, while my, wa my roommates were watching TV. <laughs> this, is before, this is before the internet was there. Can I think of this? Yeah, there was cable before. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's also still stable, right? Because player three uh, does not value. Um, so I'm just looking at the top left, right? right? Uh -huh. The reason it's also stable is because player three values that outcome more than the top right as well, right? So they don't have an incentive thinking two steps ahead. Oh, that's right. Okay, two so steps forward. Right. What about player three? Player three really likes this the best, yeah. Right. Yeah. But in some sense, player three is kind of immaterial because player three has no ability to move from here. Right. Right. If, if if it was like this, then like this is like if this person three had to do that. Mm -hmm. Like say you need a super majority to go from here to here, then you would have that. But just in the way I've written this, you know, we don't have to worry about person three right now. Right. Yeah. Okay. So that's one example. So the other example I guess is a little slightly more uh sophisticated. Wait, Marshall, what is this game called? It's not good. This is just a conversation. Okay. I just want to make sure I get the name. Sometimes people use the word paradox. Okay. Or the arrows and possibilities. Huh? Arrows and possibilities. Yeah. No, people confuse the arrows and possibilities as a different thing. Yeah, it actually is a little bit different. Huh? Oh, well, we can talk about that too. Yeah. Tom Schwartz used to teach a class on that. I guess it's something you could yeah. But the, the, the thrust is similar. Yeah. So the thrust is that basically you just have a lot of chaotic stuff. <laughs> That's more just like, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Group majorities. Yeah. Don't always come from, you know, simple preferences. Yeah, exactly right. In some sense, that's what politics is all about, right? You have lots of different preferences. Yeah. The process by which that ends up being a group decision is complicated. <laughs> that's all just basically saying. <laughs> so it's a cycle. Sometimes people use the word paradox. 
And Kodos is a person who actually lived during the French Revolution. He was like a, like a, 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 a kind of an intellectual leader of the French Revolution. I don't really like the term paradox because um, I think paradox should be used just for logical paradoxes, actual ones. But this is, I, so I think it's not the same thing. Okay, yeah. All right, so let's do the example we did last time. Again, these are sort of motivating what I was trying to do. And then I'll we'll, we'll, we'll throw the whole thing. Okay, let's see. Okay, I had this. So I said that there's um, yeah, the ABC. So there's three people. So is it clear what I'm writing down here? This is a set of one, two, three people, right? And so I'm going to say my um, this is Z is my set of outcomes. I'm going to say there's four. In that case, there are three. A lot of the things you're about is simply not predicting, but simply specifying what's happening. So it's a big part of the reason. So in this case, it's two people. Okay. So I think last time what I do, I had um, a, a, B, so what does this mean? This means a person one has the ability to move to the other. This is two has the ability to move to the other. And you might think I've never seen these diagrams before in game theory, which is there's a reason for that because it's not all that often done. <laughs> so this is a, just a different kind of you know you're used to seeing things like this, right? Which we did last time, right? Like that. Um, everyone knows what this is. This is a strategy form game, right? And this is the name of this is. Uh, matrix. Yeah, it's a matrix game, but in this particular, this is the prison storm. Yeah, 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 exactly. So some games have a. Uh, are famous enough to have a strong game. Okay, so this kind of form of game is uh, um, not, all, not as well known, but it's, it's a very general thing. So for example, um, if you had majority rule, right, you just have the outcomes and there would be just any majority can go from any one to any other, right? But say, for example, you had majority rule and then there was like a status quo point and you needed like 70% to move from the status quo point or something, right? So that would mean, then you wouldn't have majority when you had like the 70%. See, it's a pretty general thing, right? You need to have the setup. Okay, so um, this setup is um, sometimes called, and this is something which is, these are so-called effectivity um, relations. So if you ever hear that term, which is not, you'll, it's not likely you'll ever hear that term again. But this is what the idea is, that person one is effective. This coalition of person one is effective from going to A to B, et cetera. Person two is effective from A to B. You can let me put some payoffs down. These are these are represented by, by prefaces. I think this is what I had. Did I have this last time? I think. Yeah, yeah. we have two players, but one is in. Oh, you're right. I'm sorry. Yeah, there's just two. Yeah, one is. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, there's no. Oh yeah. Okay. Is this this way? Okay. Thanks. Okay. So let's think about this. What do you think will be happening? So. Um, let's just think what's stable or not. Is A stable? Do you think it'll stay at A? No. No, right? Because you can either ones or one and two. Yeah, exactly. Being. Person one has the ability to move from A to B and can get better off getting six plus one. For that matter, person's ones can both get better off. Right? So it's not like it will stay there. How about B? No, right? Because the third yeah, yeah. Person two can get the eight instead of the seven, right? So this is what we're talking about is sort of oh, what's called dominance, right? B dominates A, C dominates A. How about C? Do you think C would stay stable? No, no right. <laughs> yeah, exactly. One will want to get the wrong step, right? And how about D? No. no, D would want to get the six. So this is just another kind of fancier version of this. It's just another cycle. And then when we could, we could simply say, um, we can't predict anything, this is the end, right? Um, but, you know, just like in many things in politics or life, whatever, there's always possible renegotiation, right? Like in a legislature, you can always do it again, you can always do it again. You know, if this was like 50 and 60, then obviously that would be what we would see, right? But there's often, you know, there's no clearly best choice for everyone or something, right? So 
Um, you have this kind of cycle, it's not that uncommon. Okay, so everything seems to be dominated by something else, we'll have this perpetual movement. But still we want to be able to say something. Okay, so how do we do that? This is kind of getting at the, what I'm trying to do in the paper. So um, one way to think about this is, um, so do, from, I guess, do we see this loose term? Can we say that um, A dominates B, so this is A is dominated by B, okay? So A is dominated by B or B dominates A. Okay, if there exists some coalition S, okay? Um, this is some sort of event, right? Such that S team is such that A goes S to B. Okay, we did this last time, I think, no? We did this definition? Yes. yes. Okay, and I think A, I, B. So this is a little squiggly thing, which means for all I and S. This means, this is a, means preferences. This means that person I likes B better than A. Okay, so, um, so yeah, so this is dominance, right? Okay, so let's do dominance. What is A dominated by? B, B right? So I just write this, right? And also A is dominated by C also, I think, right? And yeah, person C, because one or two likes C better than A. B is dominated by C. C. Writing in nothing else, C is dominated by C. C. And D is dominated by A. Okay. All right, does that make sense? Yes. So, okay, have you ever seen this stuff before? A little bit. A little bit. <laughs> anyway, but you know, it's just math on top of this thing. The main thing is just understanding that this is what's going on here, right? Yeah. The idea is a person one can move in there, there, let's see. Okay. Um, yeah. I'm sorry. Okay, oh, sure. Can you just tell me about the notation SN? What's in the middle? Oh, so what is this thing? Yeah. This is a little, it looks like, it looks like a little C, but it's a subset mark. This means of S is a subset of N, so N is a set of people. Oh, so yeah. It's just so some coalition. So of S people. is one or two. Right, or one, two, both. Yeah, oh, yeah. S is a coalition. Yeah, exactly. Subset. So there exists, I guess, yeah, exactly. So there exists coalition. some coalition. Exactly. Okay. All right. Okay, so these are. Um, domination. Okay, so then the next thing I did was kind of like, okay, um, from A, what this means is from A we can end up at B, right? This also means from A we can end up at C. From B we can end up at C. Kind of makes sense. Okay, so um, the next thing we'll do is something like, I think we started doing this, is if people are farsighted, okay, we might end up from A to B, and we might end up from A to C. If the people are farsighted, can we end up from A to D, for example? What do we mean by that? Is it possible that person one will move here, for example, thinking that two will move here, that thinking that one will move here again? That's pretty far, but say that, are they okay with that? Or, uh, let's see. No. Well, person one is okay because then they'll get instead of five, right? But two is getting five instead of. Is that at this point two would not want to participate? Yeah. Right? Yeah. Make or sense, D. kind of. Yeah. So, so is the is the path going from A to B to C to D possible? If people are far sighted. No. No, because two would not participate. Yeah. Knowing that they would get five in the end. Okay. Okay. So I think A to B C to D is not possible. How about A to C to D? Is that going to happen? Well, one or two come to here, knowing that in the end they'll go to here. Yeah. Oh. So one or two have to. Oh, two. No, two. Exactly two. right. Two would want to some fun. Exactly. Two would not participate in that very first move, right? Okay. How about this? How about B? Well, we have B to C, but how about B to D? Well, two would. Yeah, two will not want to go, knowing that they'll get seven instead of five, right? right? So B to D is not going to happen. How about B to A? No. No, that's not going to happen, right? Two doesn't <laughs> want to get six instead of the seven. Yeah. Okay. How about C? So we know C to D. How about C to A? 
No. No, right? Because one doesn't want to fly. Okay, how about C to B? No, that's not going to happen either. Okay. Okay, how about D to... Well, you have D to A. How about D to B? Uh, hold on. No, I think it'll happen. Wouldn't one want to be further though? Okay, from here, D is going to move, and then D is hoping they'll get seven, so that's okay, right? But it's not okay with one. Yeah, but one doesn't get to, to make that choice here, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, one gets to make choice here. So I think, yeah, from D, we could move to B, I think. Yeah? yeah? So I'm going to write that as this. So this is the thing which I, this is sort of speak these little two things. This is indirect dominance, and I'll define in a second. Okay. So the idea is that indirect dominance means that it's conceivable there's a story in which people, by looking ahead, move into the okay. okay. So in fact, uh, this is direct dominance, so to speak. And uh, um, the way we'll define it, um, direct dominance also means you can direct dominance. Okay. Anything else? Did you do them all? How about D to C? Yeah. D will two will get yeah, two will get the A instead of right? Oh, do you go into this way? Yeah. Yeah, I think you're in, yeah. Two ways. Yeah, it's a two ways to do it. Yeah, exactly. Going up here. Mm -hmm. And then say we go to here, exactly. And then one or two would want to do that. And then D will want to move here, hoping for the yeah, yeah, absolutely. So I think we could go this way too. Good. Anything else? That might be it, right? I'll check A or D. I think that happened. Uh, you check B to D. That's not gonna happen. B to A is not gonna happen. Okay. C to D, C to A, C to A is not gonna happen. Yeah, C to B. Yeah, I think this is it. Okay. Um, shall I give a definition? Let me write that down here. Okay. So we have um, we have the um, this is my game is a set of players. And these are my outcomes. And then we have this. This is a so called effectivity relation. So what this simply means is when I write this down, it means that, means that correlation S has a new, so it has a power, it's effective from um, um, A to B. Okay, and then we have finally have these things, which is preferences. It's just like a little squiggly, I think, so this is our preferences. the outcomes. Okay, so one thing we said is we say that so this is my game. This is what I define as my game. And it's not a strategic function, it's some sort of just thing that arrows. <laughs> but it does capture a lot of these things. So I will capture this conversation for okay. okay, so we said that we said that A this, right? Then it's A dominates so B dominates A. I think I wrote that down over there, right? Uh, uh, um, there exists some coalition S, which is a subset of it, such that coalition S has a uh, visibility move from A to B. And what did I say over there? And Everyone in, in S likes to be better than A. Just wrote, it's not really the same thing I wrote down over there. Okay. Alright. Now, how about this indirect dominance thing? I think this is so B indirectly or sort of far, far sidedly dominates A. So, 
Okay, how would I define that? So it's basically like we want to say, I'm trying to get at this idea that it's possible to remove to A and B if you put a cross there. How does no one do that? So for example, here we had D is indirectly dominated by C. It's possible from D will move all the way down to C. Because huh? no discount, right? No discount, yeah. There's no time purpose. Although there are models that you can do this. So how would I define it? Well, first of all, you could have like a chain of movement, right? You could have several. So let's see, I think I did this with so well, let's say uh we can do this with if there exists. S such that say that A can go to B and Okay, so say that some coalition can move from A to B and everyone in like lets B but A. Okay, would you think that well, can that movement happen? This is just like one step. Right? Uh -huh. yeah. no, right. So so we say B directly dominates A. A goes so I just wrote the same thing over again. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so in other words, indirect dominance will capture dominance also. It's, it's bigger than dominance, yeah? So this is definitely possible. What's another possibility? Say that we did two steps. What would that look like? There's some outcome that dominates A but it's dominated by B. Yeah, yeah, something possible. like that, right? So say there's two, so or where there exists, say, I don't know, I think, I'm going to do this. I'm going to show you the thing right. Say S0. S1 and then, so there's two coalitions, so it's such that A goes from S0 goes from A goes from S0 takes A to something else, so I don't know, like um, I don't know, A1, and then S1 takes that to B. Okay? Makes sense? So, like in this case, uh, from D going, is directly done by B, so A is like the one in the middle, yeah? Okay, so if this is the case, and what would the, what does S0 want it to have? They gotta prefer what? Well, they prefer, well, not necessarily what are right, because they would like to move here, but if they're looking to have, they, this could be bad for them, but as long as they get something good in the end. Does that make sense, right? Yeah. yeah. So they care about B more than A, right? Such that what? A and then um I B roll and then that's zero. And no space here. Okay, and what else? So S zero has got to have B by B to an A. What about S1? Yeah, exactly right. They prefer B over A. And um, so A1 for all I and S1. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So this is another step, yeah? Uh, okay, I just there's one more that we have, maybe. Uh, it's oh. just in the middle of the section of the uh, Yeah, right there. Next to the R. No, above that. Where the words are. Yeah, before. Oh, person I, sorry. <laughs> oh, sorry. Person. Um, person is. Yeah. Person I's. Yeah. Okay. Person I can take it. Sorry. <laughs> One of my physics teachers when I was in college, he said that the social sciences are always trying to uh, imitate the physical sciences. So. The smallest um, 
unit of matter matter is like what? Electron or proton. Well, not a quark, but the but yeah, there's a neutron. neutron. You age. <laughs> Shit. So therefore, the smallest unit of social existence is a I person. Oh, oh, that counted as a joke. <laughs> That's pretty funny. That's yeah, pretty funny. <laughs> <laughs> You're gonna go sell that dinner party. <laughs> but there's also now this whole theory about like even the person is like made of interacting elements, right? You know, interacting psychological elements. Like you have a certain yeah. module in your brain. Should I go talk I, to John Zollin? <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah. There's there's lots of physics stuff on there. You know, you have like something, there's regulatory stuff going on, you know. It's, your brain itself is a system or something, so it's not just a single place. Okay, so um, you can kind of see we can do more and more of this, right? Okay, so like, I think, let me see if I can do this in general. So, so instead of doing the next thing with two and the next thing with three, I think what I'll do is I'll just write it in general. So. Okay, so, and I also, what I'll write is this. So, um, Okay, so we'll say, all I'm doing is way running this thing. Um, so you're doing dot dot dot. Yeah, I'm doing dot dot dot. <laughs> so <laughs> say, A, B indirectly down this A is uh, B indirectly down this A. If there exists um, some coalition, so I'll just say a list of them, S0, S1, blah, 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 Sn, Sn, these are all such, you know, these are all cohesive. And outcomes of A0, A1, A1, Am, is where a0 equals A and A M equals B. So the idea is Is it S N minus one? Oh it's it M. M. It is M. Yeah, N would be the number of people. Oh, what is it? Just some random. Like in this case N would be two. Yeah. Uh, just the number of you know coalitions yeah. going on there. Oh. Okay. Alright. Such that. So this is just so we have a I goes okay. So in other words, S goes zero goes from A zero to A one. S one goes from A one to A two. Okay, so this is just a, a sequence of movements, okay? And um AI. What is this one? This is now slightly different. This is a coalition, this is a set of people. What this simply means is that everyone in SI likes people in everyone. So it's just a, a abbreviation of writing this. Okay? So I don't care this means. A R B O M. Okay. Alright, so what's going on? B directly on this A. If we have like a sequence of deviations, that's what this is. So S, S0 is going from A0 to A1, S1 from A1 to A1. This is where we start, this is where we end. Okay. So I said, you know, this, you again, S0 is going from A0 to A1, et cetera. And each person, each coalition likes the, the end better than where they move from. Okay. I think that's it. So I guess four, I think it's four. We can say it's four I equals zero, one, two, and so S M minus one is the last coalition. They move from A M minus one to A M, <laughs> which is B. And they like B better than A M minus one. Okay. This is the definition of uh, index dominance. Okay. So going back, I think this is my example here, right? This is a. Uh, um, a, B. So this is indirect dominance. And so in, uh, direct dominance is also included in indirect dominance. So we can do all this. And the idea here of this direct, indirect dominance is that 
These are all possible movements people can take if people are, are uh, far side. Uh, it is possible to move from D to C. Okay. Maybe it won't happen, but it's definitely possible. It's conceivable. Okay. Right. I hope it's still recording. Oh, it's okay, good. Okay. All right, now let's go back. So this is my inductor dominant. And kind of, we're still kind of in this sort of mentality of like saying, talked about this a little bit last time, there's no way to guarantee that anything will be stable, right? But instead we're gonna ask the question, can we make some sort of story which justifies it being stable? Okay, so now we have indirect dominance. Let's think about this. Let's start now with say all possible things. And now I'm, I'm going to do the example, then I'll do another definition. So this is going to motivate the definition. Okay, say that everything is, say, possibly could be stable. Okay, if we're st staying with A, what's the story to make A stable? To make A stable, I have to come up with some story of why one would not deviate to B. Right? Okay. If one deviates made to B, what are conceivable things that could happen at that point? If one goes from A to B, they could just stay there, perhaps, right? Mm -hmm. Or it's possible we'll end up at then you go to C. C, exactly. So this little table tells us what could happen. Yeah? Okay, so starting from A, if one moves to B, we could stay there or end up at C, because that's what this tells us. Mm -hmm. Will either of those things deter one from doing that? So here, one's thinking about going to B. Mm -hmm. If they stay there, will one make that move? Yeah. Hold on. Yeah, right? Oh, yeah, the yeah, six yeah. doesn't apply. Right? So if A thinks, okay, one's thinking, I'm going to move to B. I don't know what's going to happen, but we could stay there, in which case I'll get a six, which is good for me. But it's also possible we'll end up at C. Is that good for me? Yes. Yeah. Seven doesn't apply. Right? So the idea is that one's thinking, okay, I move from A to B. We might say B, we might say C. I don't know what's going to happen. Either case, better off. There's no reason for me not to do this. Make sense? Uh, yeah. I mean, in some sense, one might say the only reason, like, this is the worst thing for one, right? So one would obviously want to push off and do this, right? Yeah. The worst thing that could happen is it goes all the way back around to here, right? But I think we just said before that B, we can't, we can't go from B all the way back to A, right? Because That's like. Yeah, exactly, right, exactly, right. We don't, we don't have this. This is a design, right? Okay, so the idea is that, okay, so from starting from A, when one deviates from B, we either end up B or C. So either way, one wants to move, right? So the idea is there's no way you can sustain A being stable. There's no story which makes it possible for B to not want to move, sorry, or one to not move to B. Okay? All right, so we can just eliminate that. How about B? To make B stable, I have to tell some sort of story why two would not move to C. If two moves to C, what could happen? Yeah, we could either stay at C or move to C. Yes? So two moves to here, two will either get the eight or the five, right? Is it conceivable that two would be deterred? Yes. Yeah. It is possible that when two moves to here, we'll end up at D. Right? And then wouldn't that, yeah. make, wouldn't that make one move? Right? So uh, this is how I'm trying to think about it. Wouldn't D be on the track of two as well? Because two will move to A, which is the rules of the way. So, no. so, so moving back full circle, right? So B moving to D, uh -huh. D is a favorable outcome for one, but an unfavorable outcome for two. Right. But if they move to A, then that's a favorable outcome for two, but an unfavorable outcome for two. Probably not sure. So, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. So. But they would still prefer B to A, right? So they wouldn't, no, no. So they wouldn't move to C, right? Yeah. Okay, so, yeah. We're thinking about, yeah, exactly. We're thinking about G, because two wouldn't be to C. Okay. What will happen? 
<laughs> it will stay at C, R in this region. Or we'll end up at D, right? But from C, I don't think we're going to go end up at A. Okay, right? Because we don't have C. We don't have this. Right? Because. A is the worst outcome, but D is the worst outcome for two. Because I'm looking at five and six. That's what I'm. That's what's driving my reasoning. But I don't think these are. No, no, go ahead. I'm not sure. I understand. So, traces happen. Yeah, sure. So. Uh, what I'm thinking is, obviously, that so mm -hmm. D is an unfavorable outcome for two, but and A is an unfavorable outcome for one. Okay. But is it, it is a favorable outcome, a more favorable outcome for two than D. Okay. So wouldn't that mean that if they end up here, then A is in danger of moving back to where they don't want to be? Well, what does it mean? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah sure. Right, 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 no, no, you're right. No, no. Yeah, exactly. If we end up here, one is like risking something. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Okay. I guess but but what I'm trying to answer is the question well there are two we want to be a C. That's all it. Okay. I think your thing will come up in a second though. <laughs> but I think but I think it's okay, so let's just go back to the answer the initial question. Can two smooth from B to C be deterred? Okay, so when two moves from B to C, we either stay at C or we end up at D. That's the only possible thing. Can we have a story in which person two's move from B to C is deterred? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's right. This two can think, oh, if I move to C, we might end up at D, in which I'll get a five instead of seven. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it is possible. B is still possible. Mm -hmm. We can have a story where B is, is uh, um, sustained. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's good. How about C? Okay, C. We have to talk about why one would not want to move from C. So C, one can move from C to D. Then two to A. Yeah, so exactly. It's possible from D will move to A, and that will deter a person from one move from C. Okay, so this is still possible. Okay, how about D? Is person two's move from D to A? This is kind of like what you're talking about. This person two is going from D to A can that be deterred? If two moves from D to A. I don't think so. Right. Yeah, it only gets better, exactly, right? From A you will stay there or will end up at D or C. In all those cases person two is better than yeah. Right, exactly. So there's no way to stop person two from moving. Mm -hmm. So would this would this be a problem? That's what we're trying. So I mean so okay from the face of it, let's so I guess okay, we have um, what is it? Uh, for these are the A's, all the outcomes such that there is no So, like, of course, some of those things which are not dominant. Okay? So, for example, if this were. <laughs> 50, 60, then A would be in the core. Nothing would be. Yeah? But as I've written it, what's the core? Hold on. For B, is, any, is, B, is B dominated by something? Is the definition of it? Yeah, dominated by C, right? There's a core. Yeah, the core is empty. Yeah, thank you. Yes, core is empty. Well, okay, so it's, yeah, usually with the core is not empty, it seems like a pretty strong reason to why you'd stay there, right? If there's a point from which no one can gain by deviating, it seems pretty reasonable. Yeah, this is kind of like the equivalent of Nash equilibrium. Right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. However, there is another, well, there's an argument against the core having to do with partial reasons. Right? When I'm looking at this, I, the way I view it is C, I think that's what we want, but C looks like C for zero. Uh -huh. um, so sometimes we use equilibrium, but I think it's so when I I'm trying to think of the paper if I ever use the term equilibrium. So uh, in this paper I didn't use that term because um, well maybe it does make sense. Okay. Equilibrium is usually thought of like in physics or whatever. Equilibrium is a point from which if you move away from it you get pushed back. Right? Okay. And actually equilibrium is a little bit like that in the sense that it's a point from which if one person wants to deviate, they want them to move back themselves. Okay, so it's kind of like that for each person. Okay. 
But uh, sometimes people view equilibrium in a different way, which is kind of um, like how to interpret something. It's like um, like it's a situation in Nash equilibrium which, given what everyone else is doing, I'm thinking about them, and then I'm making a choice. Okay, and then and then I make a choice, and then if everyone else thinks so, like if I think about that person making a choice, because other people said there's like this long chain of things. That, if that's all consistent with itself, that's also not sure it's not really about it. So there, it's not moving, it's not in, in time, so to speak. People are not literally moving away, but rather this kind of process of like, oh, I'll do this because you do that because you do this and that. But that also kind of doesn't diverge. But um, some people, you know, it's just kind of a, an accident of history in some sense. I think that the term is a little confusing because um, um, you can almost say that you should only use the term equilibrium if you're talking about an explicit kind of process by which things are moving around. You know, like a pendulum has an equilibrium because you can actually see that, right? The Nash equilibrium is a little different than that. It's not, you know, we're not actually saying people might move around to push back like You know, um, so maybe the term equilibrium is a little different. In evolution, people use the term equilibrium for like a portion of like characters and like bunnies and wolves. Have you seen this kind of thing, these models? Like if there's too many bunnies and the wolves get larger, and then to make the two few bunnies and the world gets smaller. So that's also an equilibrium. I think it makes it sick because then there's this process by which you know, people are, you know, buying them. So this is a little <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Huh? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Right, yeah, like, yeah, there's walk full terra. Yeah. Yeah, exactly, right. Um, it's a classic model. Yeah, you can use the picture for example. Um, Yeah. It's a, it's a model, but we can use it for different purposes. Yeah, absolutely. Well, like modeling COVID, it's essentially the same thing, right? There's so many people who haven't had COVID. Mm -hmm. They're giving that, what's that? Look COVID. Yeah, it's the same thing. Kind of thing. Yeah. Okay. All right, but in any case, <laughs> so in this paper, I use the term consistency because this is kind of what was going on. So it's not really about um, what and what will happen, but rather what kind of things can you make a consistent story which would, which which says might happen in some sense. So I'm not saying, okay, so let's just continue. What, what, what we can say is A will seem to definitely not happen, right? There's no way in which A will happen because there's no even, regardless of what happens, we can't even come up with a story why one would not want to move away from A. That makes sense. There's no way, like, the only way one would want to move from A to B is if they moved all the way back, right? But that's not going to happen, right? Person two is not going to happen, but B is not. Okay, so it's pretty strong. It's inconceivable to A to B, right? Because there's not even some sort of fanciful little story you come up which makes, which deters this deviation. We can do it for B and C, so there's still no room. Okay, but anyway, we got rid of A without A to B. I think that what if, so every time a uh, correlation moves on one spot to another, mm -hmm. the values move down if they choose to move on to Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That makes sense. I think somebody talked about that, that's like time preferences or something. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like there's time preferences. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so what I mean, time preferences simply mean, I'm like, if I eat a sandwich today, it means one of these are not five, I have to eat a sandwich tomorrow. So like, that means, like, Say that this is yeah, happening in time. Right, right, right. So that's another way you could deal with it. And people have done that too. In this kind of thing. Yeah. So this is not that. It's just because they do this count. Yeah. They'd rather have the benefit now. Yeah, yeah that's true. It makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. I'd rather have a million dollars now than when I'm dead. Example. <laughs> sure. <laughs> Go ahead. There's some papers on this kind of, you can, I mean, there's a whole literature on this kind of stuff. We could spend literally the entire quarter talking about papers like this, to be honest. Yeah? Is, is that, you know, is this like, you know, kind of is, yeah, exactly, right. So, yeah, yeah, it's, exactly, and I, I, I was actually motivated by that kind of thing too. In a dump, like, for example, like, you know, like, Exactly, right, right, exactly. So for example, if I have this game here, 
So for example, 1A is, like one B dominates 1A strongly, right? So I might not know what two will do, but I can definitely conclude that one, that one is not clear. Yeah, exactly. Right. So it's always very much motivated by that kind of logic too. And also this, this, this logic is not an equilibrium logic. This is like a strong, like this is never going to play yeah, right? Yeah. Yeah. All right. Okay. All right, B or C. Okay. Now, there's no way to make these data. There's no way to make these data. There's no positive way. In some sense, like it's dominated in that sense. Okay. How about B? Okay, we said that when B might be stable because when B2 moves from B to C, what? one will then move to here. Right? From C, you can go to C, take C, or move to Okay? So before B is stable, you can move to C, you do the same C as C. But now this is the consistency thing, right? We said before that person choose move from B to C is, is deterred by the further deviation to D. Right? That's what we said before. Right? Person to move here in the end will get 5, and person 2 is rather get 6 or 7. So. Right? But if you try, I'm just trying to think back to sure. the matrix things, right? Where player two played a strategy where they said, I'm going to move down, but I'm also signaling that I'm going to move back up if you move player one. Oh, that's interesting. Like, would that have deterred any move from C? Oh, so it's like, first I of all, I signaled I'm doing both. Like, I'm going to move down, but I'll move wow. up if you move across. It's like I tell you, yeah, if you do this, I'll do this, and I'll do this, something else in the future. Right. And we'll end up in A. I'm trying to think if that's how. So you're saying two can commit to doing this? Yeah, I commit to moving up from B to A to defer moving from C. Oh, well, that's interesting. I never thought of that, to be honest. Yeah. I'm thinking because we were talking about the dominant strategy. So thinking about oh, that is interesting. I wonder how it would change things. Here it's very limited to just their first. Okay, game, right? so. Right. Let's say, say you have a game like. I don't know why you I think that's what you're trying to say. So it says something like that. This is like something like this. So say we're here. Person one wants to move to B. Now uh, you get the other. So two would much rather just stay in A. Can person two say, okay, well, if you move to B, I'm going to move to C. This is like the close comparison. This is plus 10, I would say. Right, yeah, it's kind of cool. So that would be the justification. So this would make you stable. Right? That's so, another way you could think about it. You could think about that. But, so, okay. So notice, in this case, that the sort of threat involved would not be credible in the sense of like person two would like saying that they'll. Right, yeah. Yeah, yeah but, uh, um, but you, can, you, you can build a theory about that too. Yeah, you can do that. That's not, I mean, I never thought about this. I'm trying to think of these harder or easier. Yeah, are we just getting back into extensive form games? Kind of. Well, see, see, look. Yeah. Uh, so I just wanted to say, what if C was one and negative two? This was one and negative two? Yeah. Because that's still the theory of logic two. I don't know if I'm. Is that this? Yeah. Because that was also the theory of logic two, right? Yeah, okay. I mean, just asking, I'm not sure. Oh. For person two, is still want to stay. No, it's still yeah. So person two, would, would person two would that have to move from B to C? No, because they might stay. Yeah. 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 I just heard. Oh yeah, yeah. I think okay, so. Yes. Because I, I, uh, I don't know if I'm making this wrong, but I, mm -hmm. I thought that maybe they have to be the same value for two to be the next up for them. You mean because this one of my solution is there? Uh, the most extreme one was negative three and negative. Mm -hmm. And that was a possibility for two to take if a if one took a step to B. Okay. If the value for one was bigger than the value for two, mm -hmm. would that still be an oh. to take? That's what I'm thinking. Oh, sure, why not? Okay. Person two only cares about the last yeah. thing. Yeah. And so this is also a pretty good threat. Right? Person, person basically two is saying, you know, I'll you know, really hurt myself and make you eat you know, so that's going to make you stop you doing it. Doesn't that change the rules of the game? Like we're assuming that they don't care about 
Yeah, yeah exactly, right, right. So the idea is that way, if you care about other people's preferences, it's actually important to change Hey, but what would be interesting is like... That's why it is difficult. Yeah, so this would not be a good bet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, 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 I want to say if it went that was 10, like that's what I was 10, would that still be a, like would two still take that plunge knowing that one would just take a small bet? Oh, that's good, yeah, that's interesting, right? Yeah. So this is a very, very mild thing. <laughs> yeah. Right? yeah. yeah just for one, everything, uh, nothing is not good. They don't right, 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 right. So going back to the question about extensive form, so if we had the extensive form, everything is well defined. It's just right. a level of detection. So what makes this different from the extensive form stuff is uh, first of all, coalitions can do, but more interestingly is that in an extensive form game, there's an end, so therefore you're right. after definitely an end. Here there's no end. Right? So things can always move around, so then it's kind of like, you know, you have this, you're in this world where you kind of have to, uh, you know, you can't do everything from first principles. You kind of have to have some sort of consistency story. Mm -hmm. So, like, that's kind of what I'm getting at here, which is okay. So, okay. So, I think well, we'll, we'll, we'll just we'll just make this story. So, going back is B is B going to be consistent? Can we make B stable? Okay. Before we said if person two moves from B, we either say C or D, right? And the further move, in, so we would say C. If person two moves to C. So if when person two moves to C, they stay at C, does that deter person two? Because yeah. really, the person two says, I'm going to move to C. Yeah. And if that stays there, no, no, it doesn't deter. Right? Person two likes that. Yeah. But it's the threat of moving. The threat is to move the D, which deters, right? Yeah. Now this is the consistency. However, we just said that D is never going to be stable. Yeah. Right? We'll never stay at D. Yeah. So therefore, now we cannot justify B anymore. Does that make sense? That's the consistency that I'm trying to do. Yeah, so how long would be? That's kind of the thing I'm trying to And so this is the kind of, that's why everything has to be circular in some sense because there's no end. The logic has to be circular and consistent. Okay, let's do C again. Okay, C. Is person one's deviation from C to D, is that deterrable? Okay, well, if we stay at D, it's not going to be deterred, right? If we do from D to because we said the D could go, we could go from D to A, right? Mm -hmm. Will that deter a person one going to see? Yeah. Yes. However, A is itself not going to happen, right? So we can't deter this move to A because we said A is not stable itself. Mm -hmm. Okay, how about from when one moves to C to D, you can go from D to B, right? Is that going to deter person one? Yeah. Yes, it would deter because person one is going to be six instead of seven. However, is B is itself stable? No, I would just extend it. Can we deter person one's going to see the So? Huh? Yeah, it's this whole thing, right? We just said we can go from D to C. Right? Yeah. So it is possible, yeah. When person one moves from C to D, it is possible to go all the way back around. Yeah, that's possible, right? From D to C, because two likes A stable, fine. One likes C stable, fine. Two likes C. Yeah. Okay, so C, the movement from one to D is deterrable by this. Okay. Yeah. When one moves from C to D, it's perfectly possible. Huh? Okay. Yeah, we'll go all the way around. And so one does not gain by going over that point. Oh yeah, maybe. Let's see about that. If one goes here, yeah, well yeah, that's another way to do it. It's like two could move up here anticipating the eight that would be five, right? And one and two would prefer this over you know, seven inches. Yeah, so that's another way to do it. If one goes to here, one could think, oh, it's definitely possible that we can move up here. The upshot is C is still possible. Mm -hmm. Tell a story why um, it's stable. Okay. Yeah. How about D? Oh, D is probably D. Okay, so in this little example, even though there's lots of, like you can make an argument, there's no core, so the core is empty, right? So it seems like there should be lots of cycles, okay? But if you want to say something, um, it seems pretty good that we should just say C, the end. Okay, because 
there's no other store we can make to make A, B, or D consistent or stable, right? There's no consistent story we can make to justify A, B, and C. We can't go to That's the idea. Okay. So it's a pretty strong okay, logic. Okay. You might not predict you. Okay, so like, obviously if I predict C, you will say, well, what does one lose to D? And I'll say, okay, well, we'll move on. Or this way. Right? I have a story. But I can't have a story which makes D stable the same way. Okay, so that's just the idea. So the answer, which I, I think the answer should be, should be. That's what the answer should be. So I think that's pretty good because we started from a situation where we could not predict anything and just have like chaos, infinite cycling to a situation where we did predict something. Okay, and I think it's a pretty good argument too. Okay, so um, I'm trying to think if I, when I developed this concept, did I have this example in mind? Or maybe I picked it up afterwards. But um, whenever you write something, think of the examples because that's what, <laughs> that's what the main thing. So that's what people will understand, basically. It's all about examples, seriously. So um, my dissertation example should be coming up to page two, <laughs> seriously. Because that's what people will remember. Mm -hmm. So uh, is this what you call life's consistent? Yeah, 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 yeah. So that's what I'm illustrating here, exactly. So now I'm going to just write down the definition. So, um, so uh, he said that why is this why is this subset of outcomes is consistent with the story. A is a member of Y. So this is basically just a possible deviation. Collision right? S is going to be okay. So E which is also an outcome. So this E is like the N E to N. Okay. Where P equals E. Or E is something which can happen after D, this is regular combination. Such that um, what does this mean? This means that if there was no slash here, it means that everyone in S likes E better than I. This slash means that somebody in S doesn't like E. Okay. So all this means is that so we said a Y is consistent if something's in Y. If and only if this kind of fraternity, which is that for any deviation, so A is in Y, if for any deviation away from A, say the deviation is D, there exists some end outcome where the end outcome could be D itself or something which is indirectly dominant, where this E end outcome deters the deviation. So this is the definition of consistency. It's self consistency because like, there's a Y on this side and a Y on this side. Okay, so it's, um, it's a condition, so it's basically saying, I'm going to tell a story where Y is a set of uh, stable things. But that story has to be consistent with itself. Every deviation away from it has to be deterred by something, which will eventually happen. And that thing itself has to be consistent, has to be self stable, according to this story. So, this is um, what I did for my thesis. So, this is the definition. And the, um, so, in this case, so, oh, then the definition is this says, is the largest consistent set.
then y prime to the subset of y. So as large as siblings, there might be several sets which are consistent. But it turns out that the largest one is the one which is the biggest. <laughs> so it's consistent, it's the wide self must be consistent, and any other consistency must be subsidized. Okay. So I'll give you an example for that. But this is just, you know, this is, so this is what I call it Okay, so in this case, um, so this is, I mean, there's actually many solution concepts in this genre. This is just one. You know, at least it does get at something I can produce from. So, um, okay. so we'll do some more examples. Thank you. Okay. So, um, yeah, it's kind of abstract, but I think it's motivated. Like there's certain things where it makes sense. But, and I was very much motivated by the premise of stuff. I want to have a story behind it. Mm -hmm. So, um, maybe next time I'll find some problems. Okay. Okay. All right, I'll, I'll try to be a little bit more than the video for this. All right, so I have everyone's email, right? Yeah. Okay. Thank you. So thanks to people, please. I'm going to get my second booster today. Oh. <laughs> so oh. <laughs> Huh? Yeah, yeah. yeah, I'm on the code page, I'm really happy. How'd you feel after the, the other shots? Not that good, actually. Yeah. So, Webbing systems are a Yeah, exactly. Right. 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 I got Moderna. Now we say it's better to switch up. Yeah, I switched up. Moderna was switch the worst for me. I don't know. Uh -huh. I had a really bad reaction. So Moderna? I don't know, I felt bad after all. I think people would say that Moderna was, I think there's more volume than the Moderna shot. Oh, yeah, that's painful. I got the booster, but I got, like, no, I'm not going to go to the vaccine. I got the booster. Oh, the ass. They're all the same. You got the booster, so it doesn't matter. You get the Russian vaccine, right? <laughs> So you're in communications? Yeah. Oh, cool. What year are you in? What? What year are you? Uh, first year. Okay. Yeah. But uh, uh, I'm originally 